This is the Bosch Retro stand. We're showcasing our solutions for processors and packaging machinery. Um, in the background, the mesmerising one you can see is a very flow plus conveyor system. Uh, that's usually a transfer system between process lines. Um, we've got drives, drives and motors over here, our Indra Drive MI, which is cabinet free drive solution. So instead of putting the drives into a separate electrical cabinet that might be 20 or 30 feet away from the actual machine, we can actually build the drives inside the machine. So it allows you to have very short cabling runs and daisy chain them all together. So the, the cost of actually wiring the machine up, putting the machine together is a lot less. Um, this is our Industry 4 solution here. Uh, this is our Bosch Rectroth Active Assist. Uh, it's a, basically a manual workstation, but it's, it's completely monitored. So it's, you've got automation type quality that you, you can't actually physically make a manual mistake. Um, so it allows you to assemble quite complex pieces of equipment manually, uh, but it checks every, every stage of the production and uh, won't let you move on if you, if you pick the wrong part from the wrong bin or if you assemble it incorrectly. So you, you basically get no, no fault forward and almost, almost zero rejects from it. So Bosch Rexroth really, we, we're helping people adopt Industry 4 by with systems like that. Uh, we've also got quite a, we've got a thing called the, uh, the Bosch Rexroth IoT Gateway, uh, which allows you to retrofit uh, legacy machines. So any, any machine, even if it's 20, 30 years old, you can add an IoT Gateway and make it Industry 4. Uh, they're very cheap and simple. So the, the Gateway plus the software and a sensor is around £1,500. So it allows you to get very cheaply start on your Industry 4 journey. And the thing I think that Bosch Rexroth brings to the party with Industry 4 is we, we've always said from the beginning that you don't have to re reboot your whole factory from start for Industry 4. You start small, buy an IoT gateway system, gather some data, learn from it, move on, and then start small and build, build bigger from, from knowledge. Uh, so you, you, can, you can effectively start very small, and build, build your Industry 4 factory from the ground up. Hello, um, what we're showing here today is uh, our unique um, PLC control system uh, running a software PLC within a PC, uh, utilising Windows for connectivity and uh, Industry 4.0 for cloud computing and data capture up into the cloud and also having PLC built into the same unit. Backoff enables companies um, with its use in Industry 4.0 uh, with our unique uh, PC control system. Because we use the PC as our backbone within our system, uh, it means that we have uh, cloud computing uh, within, within the system automatically. It's, uh, the, the cloud computing is native to our controllers because of the PC technology and uh, its connect, connection to Windows. Uh, we utilise uh, DLLs and um, OPC UA and connection up to the cloud um, with the system as standard. How we see um, UK manufacturers using Industry 4.0 at the moment is it, partly people don't know what it is just yet. Uh, there's lots of interest, there's lots of people talking about it and asking us questions about it. Um, people are still trying to decide what they need from Industry 4.0. Uh, what manufacturers need to do is, is decide what data they want, whether it's pure data or whether it's uh, connectivity for maintenance purposes of their machinery, um, or to, as I said, uh, capture data into the cloud and then analyse that for future use to, again, help, the, help maintenance and the uptime of their machines. Hi, I'm Chris Barlow, Technical Director of Aztec IT Solutions and we're at PPMA this year to showcase our smart manufacturing solutions. These are based around IoT uh, for manufacturing, which we see as adding significant value to our existing customers by taking a lot of their uh, existing infrastructure, enabling, enabling them to gain re like real insight um, and value from that investment that's been made over the last 15 to 20 years. Aztec's helping manufacturers adapt to Industry 4.0 by providing a range of modular applications that help our customers adapt or tailor their approach to Industry 4.0 to gain the maximum benefit. They can start very small, 
uh, and approach things like connectivity and really gather data from, uh, from assets, from equipment, from machines and from business systems and to bring all that data together to begin a roadmap of things like analytics and machine learning and even extending as far as augmented reality to really gain and to drive some value from the, uh, from the Industry 4.0 initiative and, and applications that are out there. In our opinion, what manufacturers should be doing to approach Industry 4.0 is, is to take a pragmatic or a roadmap uh, view and to maybe start small and scale fast. So to begin with uh, issues like connectivity, to, uh, to provide connectivity to existing assets um, and to collect that data and then begin to understand how some of the, uh, layered, uh, some of the layered solutions that form part of the software stack that we can provide can, can add some value and maybe think about where they want to be in the next five or ten years and maybe work backwards from that with their roadmap and to, and to take steps to meet that roadmap in maybe bite-sized chunks um, that can maybe not involve significant capital outlay but can really drive some value from, from the solutions and those investments. Good afternoon and welcome to the Kamau stand. Here you can see we're showcasing a number of our products. We've got robotics, we have our AGV system over here, uh, and we have a whole uh, suite of virtual reality as well that we're demonstrating. If you'd walk to the end of the, uh, the corridor today, uh, we have our basketball cell, uh, which is there for a bit of fun, but it demonstrates the programming. It demonstrates how good we are at uh, robotics and how we sell uh, different types of applications to our customers. We're very strong on Industry 4.0. Kamau uh, is probably at the forefront. We have integrated a complete factory uh, with Industry 4.0. Everything is digitally readout. Uh, we have uh, everything from the robotics down to the, uh, the tip dressers. Everything can be on the digital readout at the uh, line side and it can also be received in the maintenance office areas as well. So it's, it's complete connectivity of all of our instruments, all of our equipment, our robotics, uh, and all of the equipment that we integrate for our customers. It's something that we pride ourselves in in Kamau, and it's something that we've been doing for a number of years now. There's not anybody uh, in the marketplace that is at the forefront of uh, Industry 4.0 as Kamau is. It's something that we pride ourselves on and it's something that we find that we are very, very strong at because of all of our standard products. And we're looking to actually move that now into other areas, into general industries, uh, we're looking to take it into pharmaceuticals and anywhere that we can help uh, integrate and also help smaller companies to grow, smaller companies to, uh, to work with our products and enable them to actually grow their businesses. I, th I think there's a, still a long way to go. Um, I'm, I'm out on the road uh, a fair amount and I look at a number of businesses, a lot of general industry uh, as well as we've been in automotive for quite some time now. However, uh, what, what we can offer is so much more than just general uh, integrating robotics uh, and general integrating of uh, equipment. We can actually then give that full package which will give you the whole holistic solution and enable companies to increase their throughput, reduce downtime and, 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 and just embrace Industry 4.0. Good afternoon, you're joining us at the KUKA SCM stand at PPMA. Um, we'd just like to showcase some of the things we've got here, which are all to do with driving industry forward, which is a big part of Industry 4.0. Obviously with Industry 4.0, what you're looking for is flexibility, looking for feedback and data. That can be accomplished by the new LBR EWA here, which has got lots of feedback areas, and the ability to be able to do individual areas of batch one. Now behind me over to my right there, we have got a, uh, a little bit robot working off a video system. Now the idea of that one is that the robot camera is looking at what needs to be done then we're generating the program from it. So there's no programming involved in the robot itself it's all been driven by the camera. 
By doing that, we can be having any amount of different products coming through each time. We image the system, we decide on the programme, we run that programme. That's starting to give manufacturers the flexibility. Now, one of the big things we've got is how do we get 4.0 into existing manufacturers? It's obviously very easy to buy new equipment, but not everybody's in that position to buy new equipment. So we've got to look about where we can add cameras, add sensors, add robots to existing equipment and bring that up to the industry 4.0 standard. KUKA are able to do that with the benefits of our partners such as SCM Handling. Today we're showcasing the Lenzo automation system as shown on the automation wall behind me. Um, we have a complete automation system right from the cloud-based solutions at the top for Industry 4 solutions, Industrial Internet of Things, etc. But that goes right the way through PLCs, HMIs, right the way down to servos and, uh, and motors. With the beginning of this d digital revolution, as we call it, we found that a lot of companies are losing their way a little bit and we're trying to help them find a way through the old Industry 4 maze. Um, we've got a pre-done solution where we can provide a, an already um, finished Internet of Things solution where you can have a dashboard on your phone and that will give you uh, OEE data or we can do bespoke solutions for that type of solution. I believe that the UK manufacturers need to really look at this as an opportunity. I think UK manufacturers of machines can work with partners such as ourselves and they can revolutionise the way that machines are used in industry by end users, make them more efficient, more available, increase uptime, increase profitability and also work on maintenance, predictive maintenance rather than reactive maintenance. So basically what we've got here today is uh, the world's first uh, wireless um, serial communication valve manifold system. So I'll just talk you through it very briefly. Uh, most people are familiar with having a valve island onto a, uh, um, a network and often with digital I.O. as well. That's pretty common in the marketplace. Um, but what we've now got is where you've got one node on your network, one Ethernet IP node on your network that can now link out wirelessly to up to 127 slaves. So you've still got it all going back through one main unit, but you've not got the communication cable going back through. So this was originally designed for uh, a major um, uh, car manufacturer, um, where they wanted to eliminate the communication cable um, on, on a robot head. Uh, if a robot um, communication cable breaks, it generally takes a robot out for up to about six hours. Um, so they want to eliminate that downtime. So this allows them to remove the, 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 the issue point, which was the comms cable. So uh, yeah, again, just moving forward for with technology. Yeah, there's been a, there's a lot of talk about it. There's a lot of people taking it up, but in their own way. So everyone's perception of it, um, of Industry 4, Internet Things, um, the, the world of big data, everyone's got their own sort of different reason for doing it. Um, I've got to be honest, we've probably found that um, if it helps people, manufacturers, build machines quicker, um, if it helps them ship the product quicker, invoice it and get paid for their machine quicker, they're keen to take it up. Okay, so we're at PPMA 2018, we're on the sixth stand and we're showcasing a lot of our new equipment. But in particular, I'd like to show you uh, our new KTS equipment, which is uh, very much IO-Link enabled, all ready to rock with Industry 4, okay? So this device here is our KTS. And the KTS enables industries to adapt to uh, the modern world by being able to do batch size of one, by being able to change the recipes on the fly, by being able to adapt to the needs of their customers on the fly effectively. Okay, so this device here, we can see we're looking at a particular colour red in this case and at the touch of a button we can all of a sudden decide to look for the green. Okay, we can also work on standard print marks and we can change all of that over IO link uh, at the click of a finger.
And I think we're still at a tipping point. Um, people are getting on board, they're keen to get involved, but ultimately uh, it's important for us as manufacturers to give them really easy, simple to use ways of bringing that to reality and being able to have a very much automated factory moving forward to the future. Hi there, I'm Stuart Jackson from Biotronic Automation. We're a machine vision system integration company. Uh, we design custom solutions for anything you could possibly want inspecting. Um, we're here today, we're showcasing some new technology, some artificial intelligent systems for reading, um, uh, complicated like inkjet printed or laser coded um, text and um, also some thermal imaging for inspecting um, any products that are hot sealed looking for contaminants in the seal and things like that. Hi I'm David Hughes from ABB. I am the uh, general manager for robotics and motion in the UK. We're here today at the PPMA show to display the breadth of ABB products that is available in the food and beverage industry. Uh, the UK market in food and beverage is quite diverse. We have a lot of new build, we also have a lot of greenfield, which are 40 year old vintage. So the products here and the solutions are able to integrate into new and greenfield applications. The main focus today is all around automation and it enable us to compete in the open market in productivity which the UK has areas for improvement when you look at all the statistics. ABB has a massive breadth of digital solutions which is under the umbrella of ABB Ability. Uh, currently today we have over 200 solutions and in reality Industry 4.0 means different things to different people depend upon their experience and their knowledge. So typically when you move to retail, they are very, very experienced in automation, but when you move into certain industries, the, the digitalization piece is still massively unknown to them. So what ABB try and do is work on building blocks. So we have a sort of a beginner's guide to Industry 4.0, which is a small cost item called Smart Sensor. But equally, we have full automation robotics linked in on dashboards where you can see uptime and downtime equipment. The other key area is another device with our company called BNR, who's part of ABB, in terms of OEE uptime and downtime. And this solution came into place where we had a major company who were looking at building a new plant with new machinery and their accountant actually went round the existing plant and he made notes and ultimately the, uh, the OEE was only around 45%, so 55% was downtime. So we worked on a, a solution which gives the customer visibility so he can actually analyse his uptime, downtime and he can analyse what he needs to do to improve. This is sort of standard building blocks to Industry 4.0. So again, regarding adoption, we are still in the learning cycle on Industry 4.0. We have some white knights, pioneers, who are developing the solutions, but equally, we have, I would say, around 90% of the UK manufacturing industry who are still sitting there unaware of what they have to do and when they have to do it. So one area that ABB have tried to develop is the area of co-creation where we sit with the major co companies, we analyse their issues and we go into a bit more granular detail to enable to digitalise in Industry 4.0 the organisation from the path of we do not know what your answer is, sometimes you are unaware of what your answer is and we, together we will work on the solution. We're uh, Balaf, we're a manufacturer of uh, sensing, networking and identification solutions for industry. 
So today we're showcasing some of our solutions designed specifically for the packaging and the food and beverage industries. So everything from specialized sensors, level sensing solutions, pressure sensing, um, to, uh, like I said, the networking and connectivity side of things, and then the identification, which is like RFID systems and vision systems, which could be used in the manufacturing processes. So our, our sensors can be seen as enablers for Industry 4.0 for, for our customers as manufacturers. What our sensors allow the customers to do is um, collect much more data. So the sensor is the, the starting point for the collection of that data in the manufacturing process. Um, and nowadays we're seeing with um, new types of sensors, we're using smart sensors, which uh, utilize IO-Link technology. So what this allows you to do is collect much more data than just, it's not just a dumb sensor anymore, it can collect um, um, and be much more data and be used for things like condition-based monitoring, um, and that, that information can be sent up then into the control level, to the SCADA level, to the MES level um, for the manufacturers. I think they need to just take small steps into implementing Industry 4.0. Uh, for example, by using things such as the smart sensors, it's quite an easy and low cost way to start collecting more data. Um, and it doesn't take too much work to, to implement these changes for the, for the customers. I think a few, they can be a bit daunted by the scale of it sometimes, um, by the Industry 4.0 phrase. So it's just looking at ways to start from a, a smaller scale and, uh, and then build up from there. Metalist Lido data collection applications, we've got several different styles of application. We've got formulation, which is a device such as this, where we're guiding the operator through the build of the recipe um, with high accuracy weighing to make sure the product has the right taste, the right quality, the right consistency. From a back end point of view, we then have the management dashboards that allow the supervisor to create the recipes and to push them down into the production environment. Moving into check weighing, where we're looking at operator efficiency, we've got check weighing scales where the operator uses uh, the, the colour display to ensure that he's in the right, got the right target, and then we collect the data automatically on the dashboard, and we can provide management management information as well as real time information back to the operator. Uh, all of these have uh, Ethernet, wireless or wired Ethernet that allow us then to connect to, for an industry 4.0 point of view, have each device can be interrogated uh, externally. Over here, we then have very high accuracy weighing, where we're weighing down to five decimal places of a gram. Uh, and again, that information then is displayed or can be captured automatically. And it's Ethernet IP, all have their own IP address, and we can um, provide that information out onto the, onto the network. And finally, we have digital load cells that again are IP addressable that allow us to, to, to put a, a node on a network and, and have information shown directly to within, you, within your uh, network. We're here at uh, the PPMA show, uh, the NEC. My name's Chris Haynes, I'm from Schneider Electric. We're showcasing this year the technology that which is really fueling the machines, the smart machines, the next generation of smart machines for the future. So we're showing things like flexible automation and robotics, our cloud-based software solutions, and also our safety and motion solutions as well. So what we're showing here as a, an example is a, a typical pick and place line with three robot cells with load share in between them. This is taking random objects that's coming down the production line and picking and placing them at a, a fast speed. So for high speed applications that are faster than a single robot cell can cope with, we can have the load balancing system automatically managing that with the three Delta robots you see here. The kind of system that we're using gives maximum flexibility, it gives high um, performance and it helps you to optimize the production process. Alongside that, what we're also launching at this show this year is our Machine Advisor software. Now, this allows machine builders to manage their entire install base, um, wherever it's installed across the world, using cloud-based solutions. Um, with the cloud-based solutions, they can monitor, they can track, they can document, um, and, and they can 
uh, optimized machine performance using simple subscription-based type services. So for the first machines, it's free of charge. They simply log on, register, collect data from their machine via the cloud, um, and track that through the system. This is gonna allow machine builders and end users to develop completely new relationships and business models for the future. So instead of, for example, buying machines, uh, end users could be leasing or even paying per use. That kind of system allows the machine builders to manage that whole relationship a lot more effectively. And then on the left hand side here we're seeing cloud-based solutions which are helping us to manage and optimize the whole production process. So that really is taking a huge amount of data that we're getting from our smart devices now and allowing us to analyze that, manage that at the cloud level and distribute that information right throughout the enterprise, whether it's local or whether it's in uh, a spread across different countries. I think in terms of uh, what we recommend end users to do in the future in order to implement Industry 4.0 is really around creating a vision. Looking forward more than just 12 months, but three, four years, and, and trying to predict what that is gonna look like and building a strategy behind that. Beyond that, it's round about creating collaborative partnerships, building an eco-structure in order to create the industry 4.0 vision of the future, because no one supplier can do everything. So it's really about picking the right open technologies and picking the right partners to help do that. And then start small, start with a pilot project, prove it and prove the return on investment before you go big scale. I think in terms of where we see Industry 4.0 currently is the adoption of it isn't quick enough. If you compare UK manufacturing with uh, our G7 or G8 partners, we're behind the curve. We've got some catching up to do. The good side of that is we've got most to gain. And if you look at some of the research that's been done in that area, you're looking at productivity potential growth of up to 20, 20 plus percent. So there's big opportunities there, but the pace of change needs to speed up. Um, and uh, we've got obviously uncertainty with Brexit, but that also, that uncertainty brings opportunities as well. So we see some big opportunities for Industry 4.0 and the adoption of automation technologies in the future. So welcome to the Omron stand. At the PPMA show, we're highlighting a number of technologies. One of the key ones for us is a new controller, which includes embedded artificial intelligence. And this is a first for industry. Traditionally, artificial intelligence has been migrating information from machine level into the cloud and processing that information in an AI engine. What Omron's now developed is a controller that includes an artificial intelligence engine directly at machine level. And this offers some key benefits. Essentially, we can process all the information collected from the machine controller and react to it in real time. So by analyzing patterns from a machine, we can actually get the machine to start learning and actually uh, correcting itself for any abnormalities. Some of the other uh, technologies we're showing are robotic technologies, which include both fixed robots and also AIVs, which are uh, uh, intelligent automated vehicles. And essentially these are used for automated logistic tasks and robotics technology are used for material handling. One of the other focuses for us uh, includes uh, connectivity. So we're looking at how we can migrate information easily from machine level uh, all the way into the IT layer and now onto things like mobile phones and tablet technologies, making data accessible uh, for everybody within a business. Many of these technologies are actually developed to support customers with their Industry 4.0 journey. Uh, so artificial intelligence will be key in the future for delivering Industry 4 type solutions. So machines which can actually adapt and learn from themselves are a big, uh, a big part of an Industry 4 strategy. Uh, automated handling, again, is all around productivity improvements and flexibility in manufacturing. Uh, the technologies themselves uh, allow manufacturing to become a lot more flexible and a lot more adaptive, uh, even down to producing unique products uh, of a lot size one.
Hi, I'm Arthur Stone. I'm the CEO of OE Systems. We're here today at the PPMA show to show our Perform OE software. So our software manages the performance of high volume production lines, uh, in this case mostly packaging lines for what you see here at the show. Um, we're using the OEE model to identify opportunities for our customers to reduce their costs, improve their capacity and drive business performance excellence in their, in their operations. Software like this is, is key and core to, soft, to Industry 4.0. So we're effectively the data engine, providing the data and the intelligence from the manufacturing equipment and converting it into actionable intelligence that customers can use to drive those performance. These days, our customers are expecting to have live intelligent information from their production lines at their fingertips, on their phone, on their tablet, available at all times and they expect that to be in a format that they can readily use to drive their operations. And that's really one of the keys to the, the, the data and the connectivity that we see coming from the initiatives like Industry 4.0. So what we see in the industry is more and more companies expecting that they have this kind of capability in their production lines. They expect to be able to see this, this uh, real-time performance information. They expect to be able to do that data analytics very easily at the click of a button. These are no longer specialist tools. They expect them to come along with production lines and more and more industries um, and customers are adopting this technology. It really is becoming the norm and I think um, that's what customers are expecting as part and parcel of initiatives like Industry 4.0. Today we are present, or yesterday we presented uh, a new partnership with uh, Owens Corning and DSM that will enable us to unlock more applications uh, by, the, by using different materials that we have currently in our portfolio. The second thing we announced was also we have integrated the profiles, uh, the print profiles into our software Ultimaker Cura and that enables a complete hassle-free printing and optimal experience and uh, to support also abrasive materials we are launching a new CC core uh, which is actually able to, to manage uh, the temperature requirements that those materials demand and that is in a nutshell the top three things that we have announced. I guess Ultimaker is uh, supporting the overall industry 4.0 movement by providing an end-to-end -end solution, uh, namely in terms of um, providing great hardware, but also the perfect connection with software and materials. So we want to take away all the hassle from the workflow, basically improving that workflow so that cust customers can actually focus on uh, the reducing the delivery times from weeks to days and hours, and they can keep their production units running without any problems. I'm the uh, commercial director from Silatech, um, an investment casting foundry in the UK and we're a customer of Ultimaker and we're here at the exhibition uh, to demonstrate how we use 3D printing and specifically the Ultimaker to turn 3D prints into uh, metal parts. So we use um, a block moulding version of the investment casting process where we will print the um, actual part. We will then attach that onto a frame. We'll put it in a box and fill it with an investment plaster. We will then burn out the, uh, the um, rapid prototype and fire the mould. And after um, the mould has been fired, we will then pour in molten aluminium or brass to be left with the part in metal. Here we have an example of, uh, of, a, of a box. This would typically be in metal rather than plastic. Um, and we have uh, a frame where we've uh, attached some of these uh, parts again, which we've printed on the Ultimaker. We would fill the box completely, as mentioned, and then we would burn this out. Once you pour in the metal, you're left with this as your metal part. Once we've gone beyond um, the uh, prototyping stage, we would then have the customer invest in tooling, and that would be a hard aluminium tool um, in which we would inject wax and then go through the same process. 
So our process is a very specialist process in terms of um, delivering small, lightweight, complex parts and can cast down to 0.5 of a millimeter. So we're very heavily into aerospace and space applications. My name is Nick Brewer. I am the Events Marketing Manager for Formlabs and uh, we are here at TCT in Birmingham uh, showing off the Form 2 desktop 3D printer and uh, the Fuse 1 which is on the other side of our booth uh, which is an SLS uh, 3D printer and we're here uh, showing you know our wide variety of materials, the ease of use of our printers and uh, you know high quality SLA and SLS uh, 3D printing. Today um, at TCT 2018 we're um, representing Stratasys and Desktop Metal, um, so we're showcasing a wide range of 3D printers, um, additive um, manufacturing stuff as well, um, and we've just launched the 3D Print Academy, um, so helping manufacturers, people who've invested in 3D printing technology to make the most of their technology. We find that companies need to kind of look more into um, new ways of manufacturing um, to, to, to fit into Industry 4.0. So traditional manufacturing still has its place, but additive manufacturing can help that. It can streamline products. It can get products to market faster. Um, you know, it's not just pretty pictures and you know colourful models like this. We are printing out jigs, fixtures, manufacturing tools for companies around the world, um, and they're seeing really good return on investment. Um, so we think it's something imperative and in really important for companies to include within their manufacturing um, their manufacturing workflow.